And when you hear someone cry a genuine cry, not a drama cry, a genuine cry of despair, how could you not feel that and let it move you into, at the very least, sending love and light, if not compassionate action where appropriate or relevant? So to be able to feel, to sense, to be aware of the fact that there's billions of people crying for clarity, crying out for clarity, and they don't know. They just, they don't know, but they, they seek for this. They seek for God. They seek for love. They seek for liberation. They seek for the end of self-judgment. And through your frequency, through your own constitution, just like Gandhi was constituted as a free unified India, he made that happen. A single man, a single person, a single physical body made of pus and bones and blood, just as limited as yours. Maybe even more, because he was quite frail cost an entire shift in human history for a billion people and more indirectly a single person now of course he had help and support but nevertheless from the point of view of that single person he cost he decided to constitute himself to be the change i'm going to talk about this more tomorrow how to do this the metaphysics of this how to conquer yourself in that way how to attain to that state of power and invincibility when it comes to your mission your destiny he was constituted, you know, he was that, regardless of consequence, you know, that service to others in the purest ten, where you are that. Yes, it takes some sacrifice, but it serves you because it cleanses your entire history of separation between you and God. This is what I call honor. This is like the next step of integrity. It's not just, it's not just values and morals. It's actual integrity to God, to your calling, to what you know is true. And to stand by that, no matter the ridicule, no matter the opposition, no matter the violence. If you can do that, my friends, hats off to you. I'll call you my best friend for life, BFS. Because I know what it takes, and it takes the courage. And I wish to inspire this in as many people as possible. Because right now, it cannot just be one man. It cannot just be one woman. It's got to be the whole. It's got to be all of you. And if not you... If not us, if not this, we're privileged to even have this live stream right now. We're privileged to have access to this kind of teaching. We're privileged to be aware enough to even be able to work with ourselves consciously, spiritually, to have the time and energy and space to do that. And billions are not so in that state of readiness right now. They haven't created that opportunity for themselves. So you shouldn't feel guilty, but, but you are privileged in a beautiful way. And we should take this with gratitude and appreciation and pay it forward by being constituted in God's love, by not being so consumed with our personal little bubbles automatically every day when we wake up, we don't even know who the fuck we are, and we just think that whatever we think is the truth. Pause yourself. There's this quote, I'm paraphrasing as a woman, I think, I don't remember her name. I posted on Instagram once. It said something like, for the first hour of your day, your, the first hour of your day belongs to God. It's kind of like this suggestion, like when you wake up for an hour, don't be yourself. Don't do your regular thing. Allow that one hour to belong to God. You know, call it meditation of you, will. call it contemplation, call it openness, call it surrender, call it just loving, call it activating service to others. But make the start of your day intentional and see beyond the bubble of your own life. Forgive the elements of your own life. Forgive yourself, forgive the people in your life and start loving like God loves. Start loving like the sun, not just like this little candle flame with self-interest. And it's perfectly fine to have your own desires. They're beautiful. And they will also be fulfilled along the way. As Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all else shall be added on to you. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. What is that kingdom? It is God's love. It is the love of source. It is that non-dual, formless love that all can access. Take some practice, take some surrender, but all have access to it. It is accessible. It's not something in the sky, although it's also in the sky because it's everywhere, but it's not just in the sky. It's also in the earth. It's also in your body. It's also in your mind, like the neutrinos, hundred trillion God particles flying through you every second. Are you aware of that? No, you're aware of the grocery list you have to do, the taxes you have to do, the grudge you're holding against your neighbor, why he didn't cut his lawn in time this week. And it makes it look, you know, not good with your lawn. That's what we're concerned with. If we don't pay attention, it's not what you mean to be concerned with. It's no, by no means representative of your soul. And trust me, I know that. 
it's not representative of who you are. And I don't hold that behavior against people. I don't hold it against myself either if it happens. So I get it. It's easy to get swallowed up in the human bubble perspective. And in some senses, that's all you're designed to do here. However, God's love can take you far beyond that. It can truly transcend the 3D little bubble world. And there's an interesting process when that 3D bubble consciousness starts to be rubbed off on by this God presence. This is where the alchemy happens. This is where you become more than just a personality. This is where you become one with all that there is ultimately, more and more every day. And your service is going to be automatic. Ra also says in a different segment, for those who have attained to intelligent infinity, who have penetrated to intelligent infinity, God, essentially, service to others is automatic. It's no longer a choice. They have no choice. It's choiceless. In that state, from that state, from that understanding, you cannot not be of service to others. It's not, it literally drops away as a possibility. It literally is no longer an option. Not that you make a sacrifice, it's just no longer an option. Try to imagine that, that you cannot choose service to self. It's not possible. It doesn't mean that you don't enjoy going to a nice dinner and, and savoring the food or take a bath for yourself and like mm, nourish yourself. All that is included, but even that is part and parcel energetically of being of service to the whole. There's not a single part of your life that is not naturally motivated in service to the whole. That becomes automatic after a certain threshold. But until that threshold, intensifying, making it more intentional for you to be of service to others, even though it kind of still works with the duality of self and others, which ultimately disappears because God's love is non-dual. But nevertheless, in this illusion, in a practical sense, on a day-to-day -day basis of where you're going to invest your energy and actions, if you make that more aligned with service to others, in whatever way comes most naturally, passionately for you, whatever your natural talents are, whatever your natural expression is, whatever your natural avenues are, to intensify that, you will already feel a great openness and a great surrender and a great, greater honorable alignment to God. Your will is starting to merge with thy will, with the whole intelligence of what's in the best interest of all that is.